A lot of people have been finding me lately because YouTube is recommending out a video that I did about avoidant attachment. So I wanted to clarify what avoidant attachment looks like in relationships and give you some examples because I know if this is something that's new to you, it's confusing. First, I just want to give like a quick recap of what avoidant attachment is. It's an attachment style, which means it's the way that you generally bond with somebody and you can kind of think of attachment as being like on a spectrum like everything in mental health where you have avoidance at one end and anxiousness or preoccupation at the other end and then in the middle somewhere we are more secure where we can kind of like deal with relationships and bond in healthy ways but if we swing towards the avoidant end you typically have a dismissive avoidant attachment or you can have fearful avoidant or disorganized, which is kind of like a combination of the two polar opposites and you never really sit in the middle that well. Now, somebody who is avoidant, they typically don't feel so comfortable in intimate situations. So even though they're in a relationship with you, they don't love to get into all the emotional stuff. They don't like to be close all the time. They don't like that feeling of being smothered. What they do like is knowing that they have freedom, knowing that they have their own time and space to do their own thing, they can be independent and be their own person while they're in a relationship. I think it's important to note here that people can switch attachment styles during your life. You can change your general attachment style, like the way that you usually get into relationships and how you usually act. But even within a relationship, people sometimes start out more avoidant and then they switch over to anxious or people can start out avoidant and switch to secure and people can flip flop back and forth depending on the situation so it's not like a 100% set in stone thing that's never going to change it's just the general way that we're talking about people when they're avoidant and how they bond with people I know that a lot of people have a hard time understanding why would somebody be avoidant in a relationship because isn't the whole point of a relationship to be intimate and I've always had trouble with this myself and it took me a while but I feel like I finally got it and one way I described it in another video was it's kind of like if you're somebody who's avoidant it feels like a wall just like shuts down and comes over you when that emotional stuff comes up. It's not that you don't want to be intimate it's just that it feels too threatening but I was thinking about it and I think another good way to describe this is if you could just imagine for a second somebody that you really don't like that bothers you a lot or maybe you're repulsed by them maybe you're actually disgusted by them and if you could imagine that person is standing behind you and breathing slowly on your neck constantly all day that's kind of what it feels like for somebody who's avoidant when they're with somebody who's on the anxious side of the spectrum who's always texting them all the time and wanting to be close and cuddle and be near and do everything together it feels like like just leave me alone <laughs> and again i know that some of you are going to say but it's your partner it's not some annoying person breathing on your neck but it's not about the person it's not something personal it's about the feeling of when they're close together with somebody for prolonged periods of time. That's what it feels like. It feels like that breathing on the neck. It feels like that constant like blanketing where they feel trapped and they feel like they can't escape. It's not a pleasant feeling and I don't think you as the partner of somebody who is avoidant wants to encourage that feeling in them. I hope not. So for this video I don't want to get too deep into like the who, what, where, when, and why of avoidance. I really just want to give you some examples so that you can see if this is something that may be going on with you yourself or with your partner. Now the thing is with these examples, usually what we're gonna see is what's not there in a relationship is gonna show us where the avoidance is coming in because usually in relationships, we kind of characterize them by activities and things that are loving. But when it comes to avoidance, we're not gonna see so much activity, although I will mention that a little bit, we're gonna see the absence of activity. So the first and most obvious one to me when it comes to avoiding attachment in relationships is you may see that your partner shuts down or the person who's avoidant, it shuts down a lot. They don't talk a lot. And when you do have conversations, you get short answers like, mm-hmm, yeah, no, it doesn't always feel like they're listening, that kind of a thing, because they're not so comfortable with those emotional discussions and it would be unrealistic to expect them to be. And related to that, you might find that somebody who's avoidant, they're more distracted when you talk with them. It doesn't really feel like they're totally listening. They may have body language and body contact with you that 
or non-contact with you that expresses this. So they may turn away from you. They may not look you directly in the eye. They may look down a lot, or they may close off their posture, rounding their shoulders, crossing their arms, and just generally you get a feeling that they're walling themselves off from you. Sometimes it may not be so obvious though. It could just be that they look like they're distracted with activities. It could be that they're always watching a TV program and they, you know, they, they need to watch their TV program or they're always playing video games. And this is really important right now. And it feels like everything they do is more important than you. And it's not necessarily that it is more important than you. It's again, that they don't feel comfortable with those conversations and with that level of intimacy, at least in that moment that you're approaching them. Also, they could be turning into things like books and reading books. It may not always be technology that's getting in the way. Something that can be really confusing to us is that even though they may not talk so much with us and they may shut down when they're around us, somebody who's avoidant may be very talkative around friends and family and people other than us. And we're like, wait a minute, but I'm your partner. Why are you giving all this attention and all this time to other people, but you're shutting down for me? And it's precisely because you're their partner that they do that because they're more comfortable with the more casual relationships of other people. But when it comes to you, they know that relationship is not so casual and they feel a little bit intimidated by the intimacy. So another thing that I think really characterizes people who feel more avoidant in relationships is when you live together, they need their own space in the home. So they may retreat to the bathroom a lot and spend a lot of time in there, or they may have something like like a man cave or they may spend a lot of time in the kitchen because that's their place or they may have a specific chair that they sit in and you know when they're in that chair they want to be left alone that kind of a thing they enjoy having personal space for obvious reasons another example that may be especially obvious when you're having problems in the relationship when there's something that's come up and there's tension between the two of you is that they may leave for work in the morning earlier than normal and they may come home from work later than normal. Again, because they're not comfortable in the home and they're not comfortable with that tension and the intimacy of the relationship, so it's just easier for them to avoid it and go to work where they feel more comfortable, where the relationships with people like co-workers and employees it's not so personal. All right, remember how I said that although most of this stuff is gonna be like the absence of things in relationships, there are some behaviors that are gonna go against that and this is when somebody overcompensates for the avoidance. Maybe they know that they're an avoidant person and they don't really want to make it so obvious to you. Maybe not, but they could do things like shower you with gifts or they could take care of a lot of activities or just always be busy doing something in the house. Maybe they do all of the chores and this is a way that they can look like they're doing something and look like they're contributing to the relationship. And in truth, they are contributing to the relationship. These things need to get done. And these are important things in relationships that have to be negotiated. So if they're taking care of these activities and they're showering you with gifts and they're, you know, giving you a lot of free time, it may be a way for them to get their own free time and also to avoid those more intimate moments and those more intimate conversations that they don't want to have. And related to this, they may also just make all of the decisions in the relationship. Like whenever you need to go out, they're always the one deciding where to go. Or when you need to make a purchase, they're deciding what to buy, that kind of stuff. Because that way, they don't have to have that conversation that they don't want to have. They don't want to have to negotiate with you and have those intimate, possibly difficult possibly problematic conversations where you have to figure things out together. That's uncomfortable. So they may just take over and make all the decisions or on the flip side, they may just defer to you and let you make all the decisions and have bring everything to you and let you do it. Okay, so this one kind of goes without saying and YouTube, I gotta be careful about what I say here because YouTube will... Mm, Anyway, <laughs> for YouTube, I'm going to say it the way I'm going to say it. There's going to be less time in the bedroom with somebody who's avoidant, usually, because, or at least the the way that you interact in the bedroom, the intimacy there is going to be different or shorter, or there's going to be a little bit more impersonal, a little more disconnected, which maybe you like. I don't know. Everybody's got their personal taste, but for somebody who's avoidant, they're not going to be the one who's going to spend like tons and tons of time probably. And yeah, I think you get what I'm trying to say here. 
Another one that may not be so obvious at first, but when you think about it, it's like, duh, of course it makes sense, is that they may have problems with substances. They may drink a lot, or whenever you're going to have a hard conversation, they may suggest, why don't we have a drink? Because it helps them to feel a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more able to handle those situations that are scary for them, or at least intimidating and uncomfortable. And I think in general, if I was going to summarize what it feels like to be on the other end of avoidance, to be with an avoidant partner and living with them, it generally feels like in this relationship, your housemates or your business partners, it never really feels like the intimacy level gets too high. It feels like everything's kind of kept in this very safe zone. So here's something you have to remember about all of this. Nobody is 100% avoidant all of the time. Everybody has moments where they slide a little bit more towards secure, or they might just kind of like flip over to the other side of anxious. Every relationship's different too, and every person's gonna act be differently depending on the dynamics of the relationship, the situation that you're in, all of that stuff. So not everybody's going to show every single one of these signs. Just because you see these signs, it doesn't mean that somebody is avoidant. Just try to keep an open mind and be a little bit flexible in your thinking about these. But if you see this as a general pattern coming from yourself or your partner, it's possible that avoidant attachment is involved. It's not a death sentence for a relationship. It's just something good to be mindful of. And if you're mindful of it and you know it's going on between the two of you, hopefully you can work to bring it more towards a more secure attachment and a more secure relationship in general so you both can get your needs met and you both can feel more satisfied. Did this help to clear up what avoidant attachment is for you? Do you see these things in relationships? Does it make sense to you? Do you have avoidant attachment and do you think that I described it well here? If I didn't, I especially want to hear from you. Leave that down below in the comments so that I can learn along with everybody else here.